So a lot of kids are drinking pop or soda. And if we eliminate that first and we don't disturb the teeth at all, like don't even take the plaque off, which is kind of crazy to think about. And then you have them start to use um, certain types of medicine. It's really just replacing the the correct calcium to phosphorus ratio, which is what we get in our diets actually with these diets. You eliminate the things that are bad and then you bring in the good things. So we get people drinking bone broth and that kind of thing and change it. I've taken kids that had 20 cavities and I've only had to fill two. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, Hilda here. For a long time, we thought sugar was the sole cause of our dental problems, but nutritional deficiencies can lead to a host of issues. And beyond avoiding sugar, there are many steps we can take to shore up our oral health. This is episode 331, and our guest today is dentist Mark Dinola. Mark is a graduate of the University of Maryland, Baltimore College of Dental Surgery. He is licensed by the Dental Board of Maryland and is a member of several dental associations, including the International Association of Mercury-Free Dentists, and the Holistic Dental Association. Today, Mark unpacks what leads to many of our dental problems, and he offers specific tips for what to do to turn things around. He suggests that nutrition, for example, is foundational for good oral health, and recommends that we make an effort to include Gouda cheese, organ meats, and fat from pastured animals into our diet. He also discusses meridians, the connection between our teeth and other parts of the body, whether or not tooth decay can be reversed, and why root canals are problematic. Before we get into the conversation, I want to invite you to join us October 2nd at Polyface Farm. Yes, in just a few weeks, we're going to have a one-day mini-conference with author and speaker and self-described lunatic farmer Joel Salatin, along with Sally fallon Morell and Mary Bauer of Virginians for Safe Technology. Joel will speak about heritage farming with today's technology, Sally will talk about the scientific validation of traditional foodways, and Mary will cover the dangers of 5G and what we can do to protect ourselves. Go to the events page of our website to register now. That's westonaprice.org slash events. There'll be lots of opportunities for connecting, and a wonderful polyface breakfast and lunch is included in the ticket price. So register today. And Redmond Real Salt. Salt is critical for brain development, digestion, and it has been linked to longevity. But there is a vast difference in the quality of salts on the market today. Refined salt just doesn't have the beneficial trace minerals that our bodies need, and it contains aluminum. What you really want is real salt with natural minerals to grace your dinner table. That's exactly what Redmond Real Salt has to offer. Well, those minerals and spectacular flavor. Personally, I carry my little Redmond Real Salt shakers with me everywhere I go. I love them. And I collaborated with them to bring the listeners a special discount. So head to redmond.life and use the code word WISE for 15% off at checkout, whatever you buy. Again, that's redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D dot life, L-I-F-E, and use the code word WISE for 15% off at checkout. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Mark. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Now, you've surprised me already because you are a dentist who knows about the work of Weston Price. And when I go to different dentists, I'm generally surprised to find that they know nothing about this amazing dentist and researcher. Yeah, I mean, I think it was off our radar, obviously, in dental school because he spoke about things that maybe were verboten, not really important in terms of modern dentistry. Unfortunately, nutrition isn't done as much as it should be in terms of medical school or dental school. And so the inconvenient stuff was his history, uh, his studies on root canals and some of the bacteria and his animal studies. It's not convenient because root canals are, the way I look at it is every, every part of our body or organ or cell has a function. And so if a kidney, for example, a kidney 
filters our blood and does a certain thing based on all the cells that are. So a tooth has cells that are alive and some that are inert and, and material like the enamel is hydroxyapatite and is not alive necessarily, but the dentin right underneath is alive and its nutrition is all brought forth by the blood supply and, and the cells that are right lining next to the pulp. What? The tooth is alive? I kind of thought teeth were like hair or nails that they grow, but they're not really alive. Hey, that's, a, that's an interesting way to talk about that. Yeah, the teeth are alive and people don't realize that they're a living tissue. And so what was inconvenient was the fact that he discovered once a tooth is devitalized that it changes. And that's kind of where I'm coming from. I studied physiology and I always focused on form and function. So something is a form. It's formed through a cluster of cells, for example, like I said, the kidney. So a tooth is a number of cells, many, many, many cells together organized in a fashion. And then when it's devitalized and the pulp and the nervous system's taken out, actually the lymphatic system's removed as well. So once that's done, the tooth's sort of just sitting there and there's no live tissue anymore. But why would that need to happen in the first place? Well, why would it need to be devitalized, as you say? So when decay is rampant or, or decay gets into the nerve, then there's nothing that really can be done because the bacteria have infiltrated the, the canal system. So once that happens, I mean, what we want to do is avoid that. And so that's what we talk about with nourishing traditions and, and uh, the way Weston Price talked about food. So if, we, if we're not eating correctly... If we're not eating whole foods, nutrient-dense foods, we're not getting the fat-soluble vitamins Dr. Lin talks about and other people from the Western Price Foundation. I mean, we all talk about what is in the yellow fat. We're eating the sun. I remember we talked about this yeah. before. Like, you know, we get the sun. We want to be outside. But the sun is converted by plants and then the plants are eaten by animals and the animals convert, well, the bacteria, their microbiome converts that material into K2, D3, and all the vitamins that we need. So I think that's what American diets are missing. That's what he elucidated with his Factor X and all that other stuff. And so it was not convenient information. But the sad thing is they threw all his information about nutrition out the window because the things he was talking about like mercury fillings and, and these root canals. So that's sad to me. It's terribly sad, but let's focus on those things now. In other words, let's talk about prevention first and foremost, and then we'll go back to the root canal stuff. So talk to me, you mentioned K2, and of course, Dr. Price called that Activator X. Where can we find that vitamin or activator in our diets today? Fermented cod liver oil, goose liver, you know, it is very abundant in uh, organ meats and, and uh, fermented foods. K is converted uh, from K1 to K2, and then bacteria turn it to K2 and uh, MK7 and all the other, there are actually a few different K vitamins, right? So I tell people to eat eggs, things that are yellow, the yellow fat. Mm -hmm. And and Western Price had people uh, oil pulling with fermented cod liver oil and butter, like a 50-50 mix. And so I think cheese like Gouda has K2. That's a pretty good one. I like it. It's very Gouda. Uh, I know. I love it too. And I use that same pun. It's Gouda. <laughs> it's very Gouda. Um, so I would say What's lacking in, in our diet is it's a very industrial-based – most people that listen to this podcast are probably informed enough to understand that our food in modern society is stripped out of all the things that we need. So we're eating a lot of empty calories, a lot of carbs, and I can go into the detail about decay, but decay has been sort of evolved from what we thought was just a bug and a sugar and an acid to a very systemic kind of problem. and so cavities, decay is really systemic and so is periodontal disease. So these things are all being understood differently than they were even like 20 years ago. I want you to explain that more because if I'm understanding you correctly, we used to think if I had a lollipop in my mouth all day, that's why I would get a cavity. But you're saying it has to do with more than that. Yeah. So we used to say sugar is converted by the bacteria and then the bacteria like for lack of a better term, poop out like the acid, make produce acid, and that dissolves the tooth structure. But what we're finding now is with lack of vitamin K2, we don't have this pumping system, which is fluid, which I described before to you about that we think that the, or we know that the parotid gland alongside our, our jaws is actually an endocrine gland 
and that K2 stimulates this, this action that that's, goes to the brain, that's this sort of fluid flow from inside the tooth to outside the tooth. So, the tooth's like a fountain. So, it resists bacteria and resists demineralization. And that's what Weston Price was showing. But I love that illustration of the fountain. So the tooth is living and actually fighting decay. What weakens that defense system? The lack of K, it's not only the fact that the fluid flow is wrong. K2 is actually in the odontoblasts, which are the cells that make up the tooth. Sounds like if we're not nourishing ourselves properly with the organ meats, with the nutrient-dense foods, then that fountain isn't flowing anymore, so to speak. Right. So if I I don't want to say vegetarian diets are, are strictly terrible. I just would say that they lack the K2 sometimes and that they're not getting those fat-soluble vitamins that they need. I've had several patients illustrate this, vegetarian patients for a few years, like four or five years, and they start to crash and get cavities. It's probably because they're not getting the fat-soluble vitamins. They also get tired and they start doing more carbs. And so you have this vicious cycle of, I don't have the fat-soluble items, I'm eating more sugar. And so then you start getting these cavities that are kind of unique on smooth surfaces or on the root surfaces. Sometimes they'll say, I only eat vegetables and I do juicing, and, and, but they're not getting the fat-soluble vitamins. So it's a lack, not really necessarily that what they're eating isn't good. It's just not complete, I would say. So when you look in a patient's mouth, is it kind of like reading their diary, their food diary? Can you tell almost at a glance what their diet is made up of and if it has enough nutrient-rich foods? Yeah, I mean, for a diet that's not a nutrient dense diet, you can see the lack. They can have bleeding gums, they have more cavities. Uh, it just doesn't seem like there's the support necessarily. And we know that all these things are systemic, now, they're not just local. Although, you know, certain bacteria are local. The microbiome in the mouth, we know it's like the beginning of our intestines, right? So the bugs in our mouth, the biofilm in our mouth is sort of inoculating our gut. And we know, you know, bad bacteria we inhale and we get a lung infection. So we know that, that there's this intimate relationship between the microbiome and the mouth. So that's kind of what we're learning now. Yeah, it's all connected. I've heard that the heart patients, if they have issues with their teeth, like it's all connected. Some people have cardiac issues after dental work. Is that right? Is there some kind of connection that we might not be understanding fully just yet? We're learning more and more every day. I mean, there's the cytokines that you hear about, the cytokine storm that we're talking about. But every year or so, or there's another one identified. So it's like we're up to 26 or 7 or whatever we're up to now in terms of these cytokines. And those are the messengers that cells release to communicate. And so one or two that I can mention in periodontal disease is one of them is activate C-reactive protein in the liver in a distant site. So IL-6 or interleukin-6 is one that's inflammatory. Well, I'm curious, are those cells sending that message with that cytokine from the liver or from the teeth? I believe that like tumor necrosis factor is released, that cytokine is released from periodontal lesions and so is IL-6. And those are also abundant around any kind of abscess. So an abscess on a root canal is, or a tooth that died, there's a, a periapical periodontitis, which periodontitis is around the teeth and, and periapical is around the root of the tooth. That also has the same kind of chemistry. So you were saying something earlier about this is a systemic issue. So if I'm hearing you correctly, there is a link between what is happening in our mouth with the teeth and our body, the rest of our body. Yeah, I mean, if you look at a fetus, its a central nervous system is laid out early on with the blood vessels. So it's all continuous, you know, it's all one body. It's kind of silly to say that the teeth are separate, right? <laughs> so like the jaw bones connect to the neck bone, I, I have to say that. But so the periodontal situation that we see people in, those blood vessels are nurturing the teeth and the gums and they're intimate with the circulation. So if you have a small infiltration of any bacteria, it goes right into the bloodstream. So when you were asking about heart disease, the, the link is really about there are several bacteria that are related to cardiovascular problems. And in fact, if you did arthroma and you like you took out the plaque that was in a in a heart, right? Or you took you did the roto rooter in some mm -hmm. uh, vessel, you find bacteria from the mouth. It's almost every time. And in fact, even breast and prostate biopsies have had bugs from the mouth. 
So it's all connected. It's just bacteria look for a place. They look for a niche. And so giving them a niche is really where a sink or a niche or a place for them to be is kind of the opportunistic situation that we give them. So they will take the opportunity if given the right environment. But prevention isn't just about brushing our teeth and flossing properly. You're saying it has to do with nutrition as well, or maybe more so. I think it's very under discussed in most dental practices. I talk about food. I'm Italian. I talk about food all the time because, I mean, we all like to eat. But to me, it's like, let food be thy medicine, you know? And, And many smart people in the past have said, there's a connection. I mean, Benjamin Franklin was actually looking at what he was eating back then. I mean, he lived to 80. So he was cognizant of the fact, you know, that maybe alcohol wasn't good for you. You know, he probably knew all that, of course, smoking, things like that. It totally makes sense when you see through history, and that's what Weston Price did. He looked at the history of what people were eating, and that's what we're getting away from now. Mm -hmm. So I have a conversation all the time about food, uh, like eating bone broth. Like if I'm doing oral surgery and I'm putting in implants and things like that, you want all the building blocks. And if you don't have them, things aren't going to be successful for you. So we really want the best for our patients. So that's what we talk about. So you've mentioned organ meats, eggs, cheese, bone broth, any other prevention tips in terms of dietary choices? Going back to the kind of an idea, if you don't eat meat, you should be eating ghee. The largest number of vegetarians on the planet from India, right? Asian Indians, they're vegetarians, they eat lentil, they eat, you know, all these kinds of vegetables, but they eat that glistening sun. They eat the sun. They eat the ghee, which has all the fat-soluble vitamins in it. That's why they are successful probably with their diets. Some people don't eat the sacred cow, you know, they're considered cow sacred. Well, so do Western Price people. (laughs) But uh, that ghee has all those wonderful fat-soluble vitamins in it. Coming up, Mark will discuss with us some of the most common issues he sees with his patients. He will also cover the effects of sugar on the teeth and how root canals negatively impact our health. You're listening to the Wise Traditions Podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. Primal Pastures. Have you heard of their delicious Beyond Organic products? Primal Pastures was founded in 2012 around a family table between a couple of brothers and their father in an effort to pursue better health through diet for themselves and their family. To sum it up, Primal respects nature a lot. Everything that Primal Pastures does is aimed at creating a natural habitat for the animals to thrive in. And transparency is at the center of their values and business model. No confusing or misleading labels. They want you to know exactly what's in your food, how it's raised, and who raised it. All of the animals from Primal Pastures are rotationally, regeneratively, and pasture-raised grass-fed, grass-finished, and what they call beyond organic. Their meat has no antibiotics, no hormones, no growth supplements. It's always pasture-raised, non-GMO, soy-free, corn-free, certified organic feed for the chickens. No exceptions. They deliver to your doorstep anywhere nationwide, and they offer chicken, beef, lamb, pork, fish, raw honey, pasture bone broth, organ cuts, coffee, and more. So go to primalpastures.com and place your order today. And new customers will receive 10% off their first order with the code WISE. That's primalpastures.com and use the code WISE for 10% off. Hey, and stay informed about your health freedom by signing up for our email list. We have a person who is dedicated to finding out what is going on all around the U.S. pertaining to health freedom, and we send out action alerts regularly, particular to your state, so you can know how to defend your health freedom rights. So go to the homepage of our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the bright yellow button to join our email list. It's a great way to stay connected with us in general, too. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Now I want to pivot and talk about what issues are you seeing predominantly, and what can we do about them? Like, you're a holistic dentist. What's the most common issue you're seeing? The breakdown of tooth structure is is what we're seeing. And that's the number of the etiology of that was complicated, but we discussed a little bit of that already. I think it's uh, sugar in the diet. So in, in 1900, we were eating four pounds of sugar per year per person. 
and now it's like pushing 200 pounds per person. I mean, this is crazy. It's just, it's sugar. I mean, I see a lot of Mennonite and Amish people here and their diets are like white flour and sugar. Mm -hmm. I talked to Sally uh, about this too. Somebody from their group uh, who's sort of like does blood chemistries and kind of helps them with their health. I wrote a letter to him because he asked me to write it for their members. And and it was really about uh, the microbiome and the brushing and the hygiene. So for us in America, it's probably lack of hygiene, too much sugar, and then the wrong foods, and then not having those nutrient-dense foods in their diet. So I try to get them to eat butter, and I talk about the choices of plant oils are bad too, and so I say switch those out to animal fats, and that's what I've been talking to patients about since I learned about Weston Price. Wow. And I think people need to hear this all over the world. I'm remembering when I was in Kenya, and even in the most remote villages, their natural fats were replaced by the displacing foods of modern commerce, as Dr. Price called it. And they were just using regular yellow oils. I don't even know what plant they came from. And, you know, they're all rancid and deodorized and and packaged up in a pretty package. And the people think they're eating their traditional foods, but they are no longer. And I'm sure their teeth and their overall health is affected. Well, in fact, because of the plant oil situation, the largest number of chronic disease is not, it's in the third world country, not not in, in modern countries, which is crazy, but you think about it, it's flipping. So I don't want to get into big farm and all that other stuff, but mm-hmm. they think they're doing the right thing. And I think this cholesterol has been thrown under the bus for so many years because of the sugar industry and that whole controversy. But the idea is you think you're feeding people the right foods, it's probably the wrong foods. American Heart Association is still recommending like these plant oils. So if you watch a PSA or you listen to them talk about what to replace things with, they'll still say, get the animal fat out and have corn oil or flaxseed oil or whatever other oil. The fact that we're so much on the same page, I really appreciate, Mark. And I want to ask you, if my tooth starts to decay, as a holistic dentist, do you recommend filling it? Or I heard there was a book one time called Reverse Tooth Decay. Is that possible? I don't want to say it's not possible because I do it all the time if you stop the source of the problem. So a lot of kids are drinking pop or soda. And if we eliminate that first and we don't disturb the teeth at all, like don't even take the plaque off, which is kind of crazy to think about. And then you have them start to use um, certain types of medicine. It's really just replacing the the correct calcium to phosphorus ratio, which is what we get in our diets actually with these mm-hmm. diets. And when you have too much sugar, you have a, you start to get a negative calcium balance. And so it pushes this ratio. And Weston Price probably figured it out. But then Melvin Page after him in the 70s, he was talking about this ratio is really important. And it's the same deal as K2. It starts this pattern of of the tooth material starting to leave the tooth instead of instead of staying together. So you lose calcium because of this exit of of sugar out of your kidneys, you lose calcium. And so the ratio starts to change and that Mm -hmm. creates the the chalky tooth structure and then it starts to degrade the tooth. So your question about can you reverse that? Well, you eliminate the things that are bad and then you bring in the good thing. Mm -hmm. So I use this, it's it's called MI paste and I get the one without fluoride and it does have saccharin, but you know, they want to make it at least palatable, I guess, is what they're trying to do. And then you eliminate the bad things and we get people drinking bone broth and that kind of thing and change it. I've taken kids that had 20 cavities and I've only had to fill two. So when a tooth, the enamel is gone, it has to be replaced. If you don't disturb anything, I mean, you can be lucky. And I had a bunch of kids, teenagers that listen to me, that'll work. it'll work. So, I mean, I get rid of a bunch of cavities for them and it's amazing, really. I mean, you just have to change the diet. And that's what Weston Price showed. Yeah, so he was studying in Cleveland, I believe he was looking at the boys' schools, you know, and so he was looking at mental illness and mental health as well as a sick kidney, sick brain, sick heart. But it was because they were not getting the nutrients they needed for their mental health. You know, how serotonin is built by amino acids and so is uh, tryptophan and all the all the neurochemicals. Tryptophan goes into actually dopamine and serotonin. So if you don't have the right amino acids, then you're in trouble like mentally. So, but he was trying to, he told kids to go out in the sun, get shorts on, go out in the sun and eat some butter, you know, that kind of thing. (laughs) That's what he was telling them to do. And then I remember 
Also, he did a lunch experiment at one school, just feeding the kids one really solid nutrient-dense meal per day. And he found that their behavior improved in addition to their teeth and everything else. So I want to go back to something you said a moment ago, Mark, though. You said um, leaving the plaque on. I've wondered about that because when I visit even my holistic dentist, they're, you know, chipping away at accumulated plaque. And someone said somewhere that maybe it's actually good for us. What do you think? So we have generally like 700 species of bacteria. The microbiome can be changed in terms of like the bad bugs being a higher number. You know, you give them the sugar, they're going to have a party. So you can have a biofilm that's healthy until it's not. Or that same biofilm can turn to the dark side <laughs> and it's more anaerobic. So what you're trying to do is disrupt the plaque daily in a gentle way that you're not causing like a desert in your mouth. So you want to just alter the plaque or alter the microbiome in the mouth to the point where you oxygenate it and you keep the bad bugs out and you don't get pockets and things where these guys can hide. And that's that's the tricky thing. So what I was saying about that was only that one circumstance with the plaque. I mean, when you go in for the dent, they're taking the tartar off and then uh-huh. and then you just need to you need to repopulate with good plaque. And so and that that's a K2 problem too, the tartar. Do you recommend oil pulling? I know some people use coconut oil for pulling and swishing. I do recommend it. I, I've been thinking about the nuance of maybe oil pulling not as much like every day, but maybe it's a maintenance type thing. I think eating the same food every day might not be good too. Yeah. So as far as disrupting the colonies of plaque, you just want to keep them healthy. The nutrient-dense diet produces a, a, a healthy plaque. But a, a poor plaque is just if you smoke and you have anaerobic bacteria, the ones that don't use oxygen, Those create toxins, lipopolysaccharides that affect the heart, and and those are the bad bugs that we don't want to grow. They'll always be there in a healthy plaque. They're in our mouths now, but you know, in a healthy plaque, they're in low numbers. And when it turns, that's when you start getting periodontal problems. That's when we think someone's sick. I've only had like two leukemias in my 20-something years of practice, but we were, why is this guy bleeding? Why is this guy bleeding? And it was leukemia. But when something changes, we have to be observing that. So if you have a lot of bleeding gums, then you have to see what that might be. So when I think of worst case scenario or things going south, I think about root canals. And I know Dr. Price didn't recommend them. Can you tell us a little bit about what is the deal with a root canal? Doesn't it leave like something dead in your mouth? Explain that, please. If you kink a hose, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to work, right? So if you change the flow of of a tooth, it's not going to perform the way it was supposed to. And when when a tooth is devitalized, which is what a root canal is, you take out the nerve, the the lymphatic system, you debride the inside of a tooth and you put some plastic in there. That works, uh, but is it healthy? That's the question, right? That's the question. Yeah. So is it like the shell of the tooth itself is still there with the insides kind of wiped out? Yeah, I mean, a root canal procedure is named after the canal system, which are the major canals. There are a number of accessory canals. There are tubules all over the tooth. So it's littered with these, like, if you can picture, like, Swiss cheese really tight together all the way down the root. And in some places, there are more holes than others. But that's where the appendage of odontoblast, the cells that make up a tooth, put their little appendage out all the way to the ligament of the tooth. It's hard to visualize this, especially on a podcast. <laughs> so you have a you have some kind of cone-shaped thing. Inside the cone are cells, and going out towards the outside are the appendages of the cell, the living cell. When the tooth is debrided, the cells die. So those tubes become little caverns, and that's where the bacteria can hang out. And so I told you about a niche before. That's a niche. That's a condominium. That's a place for them to live. And this is controversial because dentists don't want to take out teeth. I don't want to take out teeth if I don't have to. But that's the question. And and that's why we get into prevention and we talk about food because we don't want to ever get to that point. In fact, when there's a deep cavity, I do everything I can to avoid a root canal. Everything I can. I use ozone. I know where the pulp is and I go towards the pulp and I stop. And then if we have active decay, we, we arrest it with uh, ozone. And uh, unfortunately, the, the body is very intuitive and smart. And the way that te- the teeth do this is as a cavity is, is getting closer to the nerve, if it's slow enough, the body will respond and, and form more tooth structure. And that's called secondary dentin, 
But if if it doesn't, if it happens fast, if you're drinking soda every day and it happens within four, you know, a couple months, then the bacteria are going to be inside the tooth. There's nothing you can do. You might have pain, you might not. But when the tooth dies, you don't have any pain. And then when it abscesses, you have pain again. So there's a lot of things in dentistry that are crazy that are, don't hurt. So that's one of them. Mm. Not everybody has a tooth that hurts that needs a root canal or needs to be removed. I tell patients, you have a choice. You can have the tooth removed or I can start a root canal. I do still start them, yeah, but I don't do them anymore, but I send them out. So it's their choice. I try to inform them about the situation, kind of explaining it like this physiology moment where a tooth is, loses its function, or it, its physiology is changed. Is it still? Can it still do what it's supposed to do? I was telling you it was a sensory organ. So it can sense, okay, I'm eating a carrot, I'm eating this. It, it probably sets up the enzyme systems that are in place. So maybe I know that that texture is an apple and I know the sweet. Maybe it knows those sensory things. Who knows? I, I, we don't know all that. So it's a sensory organ as well. But when you take the, the nerve away, it doesn't have that anymore. It doesn't have that capacity. And you were telling me earlier also that in medicine, if the foot has gangrene, it's often amputated because otherwise it will affect the whole body. And in a sense, when we leave a root canal in or when that tooth is dead, it's like leaving something in your body that could be detrimental. Yeah, I mean, it, for some reason, it, we can get away with it, okay? And maybe it's hubris to think that we should. I mean, maybe 100 years from now, we'll, we'll be enlightened somehow. <laughs> Someone will tell us. But we know there are people, voices that are telling us that these aren't good, okay? And there are some people that are affected. And going back to the meridians, we know people that have GI problems like large intestine, if they have dead teeth on those meridians, they're worse. And so it's setting up this like lowered energy flow in these meridians. It's hard to explain because we've learned Western medicine and we haven't learned Eastern medicine, most of us. The meridians have actually been identified recently in Japan that there's the electrical system right under our skin that we've been talking about, you know, that they've been doing, but now they know, like visually know because they've been staining it and, and they see it. So we know electrically right at our skin. I mean, it's just amazing. Fascinating. So I have two more questions for you. One, there may be someone listening right now who's had a root canal or two. What should they do? Well, what we do is we evaluate whether they look, you know, sort of look healthy on a, on a 3D ex exam. So we do a cone beam CAT scan, which is in my office, it's a plan mecco, but there are different names for these. And they have low radiation. They're not like the ones you would have a CT at a hospital where they do lots and lots of sections. Mm -hmm. And with the 3D, we can like see all around the root and we can see bone density. This is kind of changing our game because we can say this tooth looks good or doesn't based on that 3D. But if someone has a root canal and it hurts, that's not good. But most dental disease doesn't hurt. So it can have an abscess and not hurt. But if we see an abscess, then we make a decision then. Like, do we want to retreat the root canal or do we want to take the tooth out? When the decay went into the nerve, the choice was given extraction or root canal and you chose the root canal. So now you have to make the decision, do you want to try to retreat that or do you want to get the tooth removed? Mm -hmm. And so in my office, we a patient says, I want that out. Then we go ahead and we, we anesthetize them normally. We, we take the ligament out. As we take the tooth out, we take the ligament out and we infiltrate the tissues with ozone, which kills all the bacteria. It um, brings blood flow back to the area. And then we we actually put their platelets, which is really neat in re technology. We put their platelets in the socket so that then we suture it over and there's no way that bacteria from the mouth can get into the bone at that point, which is a great thing. That's part of the problem with taking out teeth is there's an open structure that's not sealed and that's, you know, that's not good. So that, that's what we do here, but the choice is always given to the patient. Women have breast implants. It's their decision to do that. And so I think it's your body. I think you have a decision to do what you want to do. I just try to inform patients, try to educate them. I mean, I have patients that have mercury fillings and they don't want them out. So we don't take them out. I will remind them and say, that, you know, these are 24-7 releasing mercury. I don't think that's really healthy for you. And then we make those decisions together. Well, I love that you are so informed. Can you tell us some of the books that you would recommend for folks who want to pursue this information further about the teeth and the meridians or root canals, any resources you might point them to, or even just authors or speakers? 
Well, you know, the Weston Price Foundation has so much stuff on on this, but you know, Louisa Williams has written beautiful documents or papers on and books on this subject. Dr. Um, Thomas Levy is a friend of mine. He he talks about vitamin C. I mean, he re- he's written several books about root canals or, or dental infections. He co-wrote one with a doctor, uh, a dentist, but it was called Toxic Tooth. He has another. Thomas Levy is a he's a cardiologist. Mm-hmm. And a lawyer, <laughs> and he wrote a book about root canal. So, if you want to listen to anybody, I would listen to him because he's not going to say something he couldn't say unless he could back it up with with current literature. And he has plenty of information. I mean, I just told you about in arthromas, there's bacteria from the mouth, right? He says it's not just correlated a correlation between root canals and heart disease. It's probably a connection that actually causal, and that's what he says. And I, it's it's hard for me to say that like. And not have the have a feeling of someone's going to come after me, like in the in the dental community. But I, I I feel like there's plenty of evidence, and there's there's enough research now. And we will recommend that people go back to the beginning and listen to the part about what they can do to prevent such a situation, and they'll explore the resources you've given them. So I don't think you've disheartened anyone. And I want to ask you as we close up, Mark, if the listener could do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? Really eliminating the the sugar, but I learned that high fructose corn syrup probably interferes with the production of vitamin D, like the last couple steps. So, isn't that crazy to think that you're taking in something that's taking away something? I mean, this is what I, I talk about often about pharmaceutical medications. Actually, if you take a certain medication, you know that you should be taking more zinc and you should be taking more magnesium, right? And it, actually, most medications will deplete you of zinc magnesium, D3. So everyone thinks that they're eating the right thing and now plant oils are in everything. You think you're eating a healthy snack and there's soy oil in there, but I don't know. The one thing would probably be less sugar, more more healthy fats, you know, whole foods and stay away from any kind of beverage with, with uh, high fructose corn syrup or any kind of sugar. The only sugar I think you should eat maybe is honey. Well, thank you so much, Mark. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. Our guest today was dentist Mark Dinola. Visit his website, mddentalwellnesscenter.com, for blog posts, videos, and other resources. And I'm Hilda Labradagor, the host and producer of the Wise Traditions podcast for the Weston Price Foundation. You can find me at holistichilda.com. And for the transcript of this podcast, visit our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the podcast page. And now for a letter to the editor from a recent journal. Thank you so much for the article by Sally and Dr. Cowan, The Contagion Fairy Tale. Is there any possibility that the article could be put into a flyer or a brochure? There is such a need for something like that. Quite a few years ago, I came to question the validity of the Pasteur germ theory of disease. I had been reading the information-packed publication Health Consciousness for several years, and it was full of information about the dangers of dental amalgam, dangers of vaccination, and criticism of the germ theory on which the entire vaccination agenda is based. I began to think that if something wasn't done to bring this criticism of the germ theory to the attention of the public, it was going to be used to destroy our society and our health freedom. Primarily because of the argument I kept hearing from pro-vaxxers that while it's okay to put your own health at risk, it's not okay to put the health of others at risk. But I never ever envisioned something as bad or totally crazy as this Quote unquote pandemic of 2020. Several years ago, I made up a brochure entitled Vaccination is Based on Fraud. And the two points I tried to make in the brochure were that the Pasteur germ theory has been questioned since the time of Pasteur, and that vitamin C is known to be an absolute viricide for many of the diseases we've been told we need to be vaccinated against. Of course, I don't really have a scientific background, but I gave it my best shot. I would love for you to seriously consider putting out a brochure or pamphlet of some sort. The world needs something like that from people with your expertise and knowledge. In fact, while out with my husband recently on a walk on snowy roads, we met a neighbor for the first time. We stopped to chat for a few minutes and the pandemic, of course, came up. And I told him that that I thought it was a fraud and a hoax. And he agreed. (laughs) I wish so much that I'd had a flyer or pamphlet to give to him. This is from Violet in Idaho. Violet, we have heard your cry. Seriously, the Weston Price Foundation is developing a new brochure 
we are in the process of preparing and developing a new brochure called The Myths and Truths About COVID-19. So be on the lookout for that on our website. Just go to our little shop on our website, go to westonaprice.org backslash orders and look for the brochure because it's about to come out any day now. Thank you so much for writing your letter, Violet. Email at info at westonaprice.org and put letter to the editor in the subject line, whether you have a testimonial or a question or something positive to say about the podcast or our work here. And thank you so much for listening, my friends. Stay well. Hasta pronto. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit WestonAPrice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.